reaching out for out to seniors, an interview with Sally Wild Snook at the Des Brise Museum, 1.30 p.m., the 3rd of April, 2013, by Betty Dolliver. Sally, would you like to begin by telling us about uh, how you received your name? Mm -hmm. Okay, I actually lived across from the hospital. In 1929, I was born. And, uh, and then I, of course, you stayed in the hospital a few days anyway then. And uh, uh, one of the nurses started calling me Sally. And uh, so it just stuck with me. My name is Bessie Jane. And, uh, but I've always gone by Sally now. Mm -hmm. So I never actually used my real name other than the signed papers. <laughs> uh were the your two names for after my grandmothers? Yes, yeah. Bessie and Jane. What was it like growing up here in Bridgewater uh, as a child, say, and then as a teenager? What did you do for entertainment? And uh, um, let me see. We uh, uh, it was a great. Great town to grow up in. We had a good time. We were happy, and, and it was quite free then. I mean, we could roam around and do lots of things. And especially then when we uh, started with bicycles, you know, we could pedal anywhere. <laughs> and uh, so I don't know. Um, okay, let me see. What did I have? <laughs> um, anyway... Uh, we and I had lots, lots of kids in the neighborhood all the time to play with, and we walked to school from Dufferin to York Street, mm -hmm. and we had uh, paths made through the woods behind us to make shortcuts, <laughs> and it took us out to the girl guide cabin, and then out to York Street and over to the school. Who, uh, who were your playmates, say as a child? Yeah. Um, well, there was uh, Shirley Havewile, and uh, Louise Hurdle lived up on top of the hill, and uh, then uh, Audrey Crouse, and oh my gosh, there were so many. <laughs> um, when you were small, little girls played with dolls. Yeah, and I had my own table and chair set, and I had it on the veranda, and we'd have afternoon tea out there. My mother would give us, well, I don't know what kind of tea it was, <laughs> but the uh, homemade bread when it was hot, so it was great. <laughs> <coughs> we were busy all the time. We loved it outdoors. We were outdoors all the time. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Did you make pine houses like we heard one lady? Yes, I laughed when Ruth mentioned that. You know, we did the same thing. Yeah. And I asked somebody else, and they did too, so it must have been really popular. <laughs> you used your imagination. Yes, I used to go over to Audrey Croce's house, and there was a little hill, and there were pine needles all over the place. So, yeah, so I used to go over there. Where did she live? And she lived off York Street, over a, a sort of quarterwise with the school. Oh, yes. Yeah. How many brothers did you have? I had three brothers, and I was born last. So, anyway, yeah, they. Uh, did they tease you? Big brother. Did they tease you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, mind you, they were taught to sort of leave me alone. <laughs> But I, 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 I could hit back. <laughs> that was okay. <laughs> uh, were you taught when you were growing up to knit and to sew yeah. and to cook and do things like that? Yes. Your mother taught you. And uh, knitting, we did those squares and made little napkins sort of out of them during the war years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Made little things like that. Yes. Uh, your grandmother, Wild, lived down on King Street. Yes, yeah. and my grandmother, Weagle, was in Dayspring. Yes. 
so I could bike down there for her. Yeah. Yeah, we often took our bikes and went to Weagles Point. We called it Weagles Point, now it's Miller's Point, yes. but uh, on our bikes, think nothing of it. Mm. It's wonderful. <coughs> so you went to school in Bridgewater to uh, the annex, the annex, the little school. Yeah, on over on Queen. the side. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then, and then and high in the high school there were. Yeah, we moved over in the other school in grade seven. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Junior high. Mm -hmm. Did you play any sports? Yeah, um, of course. It, we didn't have the chance that they do today, but we had the base, the softball field right on the school, school grounds, and we played that. And then inside, we had badminton, mm -hmm. and um, uh, let me see what else, and dancing, you know. Sure. I think. Sure. And then when you got to high school, you of course went to dances. Yeah. Did you have a bow during your high school? Yeah, we always had uh, <laughs> carried off, sort of, you know, it was sure. really nice. Yeah. Because sometimes we'd have host parties, you know, too, mm -hmm. and uh, we'd gather there, but it might be only a small group, eight or ten. Sure. Yeah, and I mean, I always had someone walk me home, which was great at <laughs> night. <laughs> yes, but that back then you didn't have to worry. Uh, no, no, yeah. that's what I say, we yeah. were so free. Yeah. Did you have a favorite teacher or teachers through school? Yeah, say? I had Myrna Heisen and the Mailmans in the lower grades. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I had uh, Miss Wallace and, and uh, of course, in uh, junior high, we had uh, Ruth Kelly and Ina Malik. Mm -hmm. And uh, high school, oh, well, we had, uh, let me see. <laughs> I can't, uh, it's so long ago I forget. I shouldn't forget those, should I? But A.G. G. Hurdle was the principal. Oh, yes. And he supervised everything well. Yes, <laughs> yes. You Didn't you take one of your teachers picking Mayflowers one oh, night? Oh, yes, Myrna Heisen. Yeah. Every Mayflower season, we went out and picked Mayflowers. Yeah, she was great. She, uh, she even had us at her house for lunch one day. <laughs> <coughs> what did you do after high school, Sally? Uh, when I finished grade yes. 12, I went to the normal college in Truro, and that was for home ec, mm -hmm. and that two years. And then I taught school for two years after that, and it was the first Royal High School in Brookfield, outside of Truro. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, yeah, it was great. And then I did substitute teaching for another two years in Halifax oh. after I was married. Mm -hmm. Was your husband from Bridgewater? No, he was from Truro. From mm -hmm. Truro. So you met him when you were in... Well, I actually, he uh, went to Tech with my brother. And uh, so I just met him shopping in Halifax one day, and then he, of course, called on me after he knew that I was in Truro, mm -hmm. and that's it. <laughs> for goodness sakes. Thanks. Snook is a, is a strange name for around here. Yeah, but no. not for Truro, there are no. quite a few. No. Do you remember the exhibition? Oh my gosh, yes, that was great. The school classes used to take part. And, uh, oh yes, we were uh, Annapolis Valley, Queen, Valley Queens one year, and yeah, it was great. Yeah. And then and having the host right on Dufferin, it goes right by. Right. So, uh, yeah, it was great. We really had a great time then. And, of course, you never snuck in. Oh, yes. <laughs> we always find a way. <laughs> I think Ivan Rodenizer told me about how his gang used to sneak in. Oh my gosh, there are probably lots of holes in the fence, eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember the racetrack? Of course you would, living yes, in yeah. Candias. Sweeney's owned that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we went up and... 
they had a big grandstand outside, you know, up in the field sort of thing, mm -hmm. where you could go and watch it, the races. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, no, that was quite a time. Did they keep the horses? Yes, they had right stalls there. for the yeah. horses. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it was just interesting to see them working around. And, and the races yeah. was a big day then. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you remember any other stories about Bridgewater that you would like to tell us about? Well, Some things that we wouldn't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, sa Saturday night was a big time. There were so many people on on the main street, and people would take their cars and park back in against the water there, you know. Mm -hmm. And that was when the old parking lot was yes. there. And, um, and they would just sit there and watch the traffic. And on the sidewalk, it was so many, it must have been about three deep, you know. Yes. You'd meet people, you'd have to be careful. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was really busy. Yeah. When the war was declared, were the lights turned off along, you know, the street lights here in town? I can't yeah. remember. No, I don't think so. I, I remember I sold the uh, war stamps, you know, mm -hmm. every Saturday. That was a chore that I did. And I go around different places trying to sell them. <coughs> and uh, so, you be, you know, you build up regular customers so you know where to go mm -hmm. all the time. And How much were they? I, I think they were 25, 50 cents, you know. Sounds right. Yeah, I, I can't remember. But, uh, yeah, and I, uh, I remember going to the Garber house, you know, the photographer's house, mm -hmm. and she never <coughs> failed. She always bought stamps. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so yeah, we had quite a few of those. <coughs> Did you uh, belong to Brownies? Oh Brownies? yes, I meant to tell you that. Oh. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we went to Brownies and then into Guides and and uh, all the time, every year. So that was a good way to know all the kids too. I see a note here that you play. You had plays in your garage for a cent. Yes, that's what we did when we were kids, really <laughs> small. Before probably when, even before we went to school, you know. Sure. <coughs> Do you remember who your your uh, brownie brown owl was? And well, Lillian Brady was very handy like that. She organized a lot. And then exactly. in, the, in the brownies it was Mildred Ritzy. She did a lot for her. Mm -hmm. She was a good leader too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a lot of women, you know, in town that really took over and, and managed these things for the kids, you know. Yes. And uh, I don't know, then we had the tennis court mm -hmm. and the uh, tennis uh, uh, there was a building there, mm -hmm. and we could have dances at, at uh, Friday nights or something like that. And yeah, they had afternoon teas, too, yeah. I remember. Yeah, yeah. but, uh, yeah, <laughs> Lillian Brady who did a lot of that, organizing. I didn't realize that she was involved with it. Yeah, there were a lot of women like that that were very, very active. Who was Peter Wilde? Was he related to you? No, but he lived in the, uh, the back of us, and then the racetrack was there mm -hmm. on the side of his property. And, uh, yeah, he was uh, an older man. They always had a parrot in their house, <laughs> a talking parrot, you know. Oh. <laughs> it was a scream. <laughs> Did it have foul language? <laughs> no, I didn't hear it any when I was there. They'd probably squelch it if they did. <laughs> so in the winter you coasted. Yeah, that was great. We had a, you know, the golf course was a great spot. Yes. And handy, and uh, oh yes, and to go to school, 
we would use a bob sweat, bob sled, and uh, start right out in front of the house and take off, and go down over the hill, and um, hopefully try to get stopped at the stir station at the bottom. <laughs> But then, you know, you could leave the bobsled parked there on the side of the building sure. and pick it up at noon on your way home for lunch. Did you walk home for lunch, too? Yes, and sometimes if we walked, uh, some, there was a Mr. Hurdle, we, Hurdle's father sometimes was coming home from work and he would pick us up, too, or someone like that. He had a car or a horse? Yes, no, no, he had a car. car. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And, uh, oh yeah, we were used to getting drives. <laughs> it was quite a walk. But we always went home for noon. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah? No? Another thing where uh, uh, Mr. Hines had the drugstore down on King Street, mm -hmm. and uh, he made the best milkshakes in town. Oh. <laughs> yeah. If you can imagine, he even made the syrups, you know, that yes. go on. At home, the Mr. And Mrs. Um, Hines. Yes. No, they were good. Yeah. Yeah. And they were twenty cents, I think. And so when we had twenty cents, we spent it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you remember? I asked you before about Foundation Maritime. Yes. Maybe you could tell a little bit well, about. Well, I just remember. Um, uh, Ruby Hebb lived in Hebbville and her having two boarders there. Mm -hmm. But anyway, my brother, Raymond, I uh, asked him about that and he said he even worked there. Mm -hmm. And he either worked on the boats or piling lumber. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he'd be an only 17 or so. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ruby Hebb, uh, she married uh, Cecil Hebb. Oh. And okay. he ran, he was in the movie in the movies theater. He ran the movies. Okay. I see who it is now. Well, can you tell other uh, anything else about Bridgewater that we wouldn't know? Uh, let me think. Oh, I wanted to mention, you know, we still have a high school reunion in town every mm -hmm. summer. Uh, it we both J July 17th. It's usually on a Wednesday mm -hmm. in the middle of July. And uh, we still have that. They, people come back mm -hmm. and uh, we uh, the girls take one side of the days in and then in the taverns on the other side mm -hmm. where the boys use that. And uh, so we, uh, the girls usually have a dinner. Mm -hmm. And uh, then they, they on their side, they can have whatever they mm -hmm. order. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, so we like to have people come to that. Sure. And Can you just list a few of the names of, of yeah. the... Well, uh, Ruth, uh, uh, what was her name? Amor, um, Muir. Uh, she's about the oldest one, oh. over 90. And uh, now Joe Robertson comes out from Lunenburg. And then uh, uh, Louise Wenzel from Halifax. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me see... Um, uh, and we have local girls, Pauline Rodenizer and uh, and um, Ruth uh, Ruth um, from New Brun and from New, Br <laughs> New Germany. What's her? Her husband's a lawyer. I've forgotten the name now. And uh, she comes every year. And uh, Janet Robertson. Mm -hmm. She lives in Ontario. They come home for the summer. And. Um, uh, I do it along with Margaret, uh, uh, Spidle, Margaret uh, Hutchinson, mm -hmm. yes. and uh, so we just get it organized for sure. them coming in like that. Is that the same one that Betty Wenzel too? She yeah. would yes. attend. Yes, that's right. <coughs> yes. Does and Joan Smith still come? Uh, no, but Alan, her husband, yes. does the men yes. organizes yeah. for the men's group. He keeps in touch with these people and yeah. let them know when it is. Yeah.